What's going on, guys? It's Steve. So I just thought of something very, very good to do. Now, we're going to talk about the Boston Celtics. Don't worry about that. But I just thought of something extremely good to do for this channel. Something that I think will help this channel take that next step, and especially for the career path that I want to go down. Now, we all know Undisputed. You have Chris Broussard's show. You have ESPN First Take. You have Colin Coward or Cowherd, however the hell you pronounce his name. You have all of these sports analyst shows, okay, on YouTube now. Now they're on YouTube. The way they do it is they have a camera pointed at their face, they have their microphone, and they sit there and talk. So my question for you guys is if I, if I were to do that, and you could see funny moments like when I just did what I did, and you can see when I make my faces and all this other crap, when I'm like, Steve, I, even got I make funny faces when I do that. I'm a fucking weirdo, I know, because I make funny faces and no one even can see my face right now, but that's beside the point. If you guys would like that, instead of gameplay and gifs, because to be honest, I want to do that, and I've been wanting to do that for a while. I just... I'm trying to figure out the right, the right way to do it. So I've been studying like how ESPN First Take does it, how they input, you know, uh, not just ESPN First, but Undisputed, Chris uh, Broussard, Colin Coward, how they all implement all of these, you know, you know, uh, little pieces of footage in between while they're talking to illustrate what they're talking about. I'm trying to take that next step. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. Now, it's not going to happen right away. It may be a week, maybe two, no, not, not two weeks. It may be a day, maybe two days, maybe three days. Just let me know. <sighs> Look, I'll sit here and I'll say this. I was wrong about the Boston Celtics. I was dead wrong about the Boston Celtics. And partly because I was unobjective about them. Because you guys have to understand, growing up, I hated this team. I absolutely despised this team while I was growing up. And there's reasons for that. Because they used to beat up on LeBron, Melo, Wade, and Bosh, and Kobe, and Chris Paul. The big three. The most hated team in my entire... I freaking... Melo hates to... So, listen. I've never hated anything like that before. Besides the bosses. I have just this really anger. Because at times when the Cavs were 66 and 16, losing to the Celtics. I don't really care about the magic because that was just matchups. I'm t I was so mad at Paul Pierce always outplaying LeBron. I hated that shit. Okay? And that used to piss me the F off all the time. So I was unobjective and I was like, you know what? The Celtics are gonna suck. The Celtics did <laughs> let's be real. They're the Celtics, you know, they've been terrible for a, a while now. But I'll sit here and I'll say this. I was dead wrong about the Boston Celtics. The Boston Celtics are a very good team. Now, the Boston Celtics, I'll sit here and I'll say this. If they can sign Gordon Hayward, this team will take that next step to being title contenders. Because this team right now will probably force five games against Cleveland. Only five. Maybe six. But I'm going with five. Just because of Isaiah Thomas's defense, but his offense is out of this freaking world. This guy is amazing. So either five or six games. I'll just say six, you know, just for the maximum, minimum five. Maybe they'll get swept. Who knows? But I'll say six games. I'm leaning towards five, but whatever. Six games. If they were to sign Gordon Hayward in the offseason, he's young. Danny Ainge would be like, oh, wow. He's actually young. He's developing. He's an all-star. Look, if they sign Gordon Hayward, the Boston Celtics will take that next step towards being title contenders. Sort of like how the Dallas Ma now I'm not going to get disrespectful, but sort of like how the Dallas Mavericks were. Like they had their superstar in Dirk Nowitzki. Now I'm not saying anyone is close to being a superstar to Dirk's level on the Boston Celtics because let's be real, Dirk Nowitzki is a, in my opinion, a top in a lot of other people's opinion, top 15 player of all time. Okay, so let's not get disrespectful, but at the same time, I'll sit here and I'll say this. They have Isaiah Thomas. They have Al Horford. Veteran experience from Al Horford. They have Gerald Green. So Gerald Green and Al Horford have that veteran experience. Gerald Green with the Miami Heat, Al Horford with the Atlanta Hawks. Back in the Joe Johnson's days, people forget that Joe Johnson used to be an NBA superstar. He still has signs of it here and there if you've seen in the playoffs. Big shot Joe. That's oh, That was my man, but anyway. Only when he was on the Nets, because you guys know I'm a Nets fan as well. And people can say, Steve, how the hell are you going to be a Nick fan and a Nets fan? You just a fake fan. You don't Whatever. Listen. I just lost my train of thought. Okay, Al Horford, 
Gerald Green have the veteran experience. Isaiah Thomas has the offensive prowess. Marcus Smart and Jay Crowder have the defensive ability. Now, obviously, they're going to have to get rid of at least one of those two players, Gerald Green, I mean, not Gerald Green, Jay Crowder or what's his name, Marcus Smart, which is not a really a big deal, to be honest. It's not that big of a deal, but the thing that makes it a big deal is the fact that they're not going to have defense now in terms of wrapping, you know, they're, they're just not going to have defense, which is going to be terrible for, you know, the Boston Celtics because Isaiah Thomas doesn't have that defensive ability that he should be having at this point in time. He needs to have, he needs to improve defensively because statistically he is the worst defensive player in the NBA. I know he's disadvantaged, but there's no excuses. You at least have to try on defense. But anyway. Picking up Gordon Hayward, who can play defense, but at the same time, and has played on one of the best defensive teams in the league for the past few years, and on top of that, this man averages 23 points per game. This team right here, I'll sit here and I'll say this. If they can sign Gordon Hayward, this team will be set for the future. And possibly, like how Dallas was a combined team with a star, and a, a not a star, a super superstar, and a whole bunch of role players and veteran superstars like J Jason Kidd, who used to be a superstar, and obviously Jason Terry and all this other crap was not really a superstar, but he's a really good role player. He made a career out of being a role player, the Jet, you know. Anyway, I'll sit here and I'll say this. They might be able to steal an NBA championship just like Dallas did in that little time period. Now, the chances of that are slim, especially with LeBron, Kyrie, especially, it's not even just LeBron and Kevin Durant at this point. It's the fact that Kyrie Irving and Stephen Curry are still relatively young. Stephen Curry probably has three, four years left in his prime. Kyrie Irving has at least six or seven, maybe eight at most left in his prime. So they have a long ways to go, okay? So the chances of them stealing one, they're slim. It can happen, but I'm leaning towards the most likely one. But it'll, they'll still make the East more entertaining. And then all of these clowns saying, hey, East is weak. Whatever. Anyways, it's going to be your man, Steve. I got to take a wee-wee. I'm out. Peace.